Mammoth Lakes, California, June 2017. Dear Grandma, I do sincerely hope this note finds you in good health and spirit. You're always on my mind, and it pains me that I cannot see you more frequently. In the not-so-distant future, I hope to be back in England, in your fine company, telling you of my recent adventures and travels. But, alas, at present, this must do. I've had the most delightful weekend, and I must tell you all about it. Mum and Sarah were so generous as to take the time to come and pay me a visit here in Mammoth, which, situated on the eastern slopes of the Grand Sierra Nevada Mountains of California, is no short trek. Miles of winding alpine roads and high desert highways must be traversed in order to reach this remote small town. Nestled under towering peaks and tall pines, Mammoth is the base camp for many exciting outdoor activities. As you know, skiing is the primary allure for most in the wintertime, but during the summer, the place is alive with anglers, intrepid mountaineers, boaters, climbers, and runners, each here for his or her thrill. For me, it was like paradise. The list of things to do seems to only grow, the scenery more magnificent with each rising sun. As this occasion was the first in which Mum and Sarah would experience this region, I decided I wanted to showcase the recreational and geological highlights in what I'll call the Little Grand Tour of Mammoth. Naturally, I started with what we are known for, snow. First stop, Main Lodge, the hub of our winter mountain sports. Can you believe that we are still skiing in June, Grandma? We are coming out of a powerful winter of record snowfalls, so there's still a large amount of the stuff remaining at higher elevations. Although they don't ski, I thought it would be nice for my lovely visitors to see what it's like. We sat out on the sun deck and watched the people coming down the slopes. It was rather brisk out, so we didn't stay long. Plus, there was still so much more to see. Carved out of the upthrust rock, the lake's basin cradles more than a handful of pristine alpine bodies of water, fed by the slowly melting snowfields clinging to the crest above. In the summer, this hanging valley is alive with fishermen and boaters, hikers and cyclists, but today it was rather windy and brisk, so we kept our stay brief. These are the namesake lakes of our town, and therefore a must-see when here, no matter the weather. When the conditions are unfavorable, it's not a bad idea to escape just out of town to lower elevations. Anyway, I knew I still had so many things that I wanted to show my visitors in so little time. Convict Lake sits in a rugged bowl under towering rocky peaks. The scene shines vividly in the midday sun, a full spectrum of colors seen in the trees and landforms. Turquoise waters lap the shore, reflecting a blend of deep sky blue and evergreen. Red and bronze crags jut out of the steel-gray granite ramparts. We stroll the shoreline trail to stretch our legs and to give ourselves a moment to visually explore our surroundings. I think to myself that this, if anything, is a piece of paradise, mountain style, another local treasure. It would be easiest to, for us to spend many an active or idle hour here, traipsing about or sat under the shade of a tree, listening to the birds sing. Convict Lake and the town of Mammoth sit on the edge of a high desert valley that was created hundreds of thousands of years ago by a great eruption. Remaining today, we have the caldera, a volcanic depression rimmed by mountains, 10 by 20 miles wide, still active in geothermal activity, full of peculiar geology and fascinating vistas. I think Mum and Sarah, like many, found real interest and appreciation in this place, especially Hot Creek. At this site, we see not only the continuation of the downhill water flow that we touched at the lake basin and at Convict, but also bubbling thermal pools that spill scalding hot water into the main flow. One would experience considerable harm should these pools be touched or entered. We keep a safe distance on the opposite shore, wondering about the curiosities around us, warmed now in the shelter of the gorge. Hunger strikes, so we meander further downstream, throw down a blanket, and picnic under the great big sky. Laying on a blanket in the grass, shoes off, breaking bread in good company, it brings back fond memories of days out in the English countryside. My heart stirs as I imagine myself back in Savernac Forest with you and Grandpa, eating sandwiches out of the car boot, or up in the fields at Jenny Cliff, playing cricket in the setting sun. 
We had some wonderful holidays, didn't we? I wouldn't love the outdoors like I do if it weren't for days like those. Appetites now curbed, we venture onto a local hotspot, if you will, a popular highlight of the region for many. Not all the water coming up from the furnace below will cook you, and over time, folks have carved out small pools where it is possible to enter and relax in a tub as warm as a jacuzzi. These hot springs alone are compelling enough, but in this setting, the middle of the caldera, surrounded by open sagebrush fields and mountains on all sides, it is something rather surreal and fantastic. It's hard to imagine a more pleasant way to cap a day of fun, whether it's skiing, hiking, or just generally running all about as we are. What was that? Mum and Sarah had booked a nice place to stay in town, so I slept over on the sofa bed. After breakfast the next morning, we drove north on Highway 395 up to Bodie State Historic Park. Bodie, now abandoned and thus a ghost town, was founded in 1876 after gold was discovered there 15 years prior. It was a real Wild West town of cowboys and Indians, miners and railroad men, saloons and shootouts. The mines here churned out millions of dollars worth of gold, silver, and ore over about a decade, and then declined in production around the turn of the century, and then was deserted in the 1940s. We spent some time wandering the old roads of the town, looking through the windows and doors of the derelict buildings. The church still has its pews, you can see workbooks on the desks in the schoolhouse. Bedrooms are furnished and shop shelves stocked. Needless to say, it's a bit of a spooky place, even in the daytime. We agreed that it must have been a rough and wild time to live here, enduring long, harsh winters and stifling summers, and with the limited technology and resources of the time and place. This region is full of peculiar places. Mono Lake was the next one we visited, calling at the south shore for some unusual features. These towers, named Tufa, are formed by mineral buildup around ancient underwater vents that pump geothermally heated alkaline spring water up from underground. This desolate looking lake, primarily formed by melted runoff from deep snowpack in the lofty Sierras, has no outflow, so remains very salty and dense in minerals. For that reason, brine shrimp is the only creature that can survive in these waters. Sarah thought we were on another planet for a minute. Mum and I agreed, though, that the whole scene really is quite alien. On top of this interesting characteristic is the fact that we are hardly more than 10 miles drive from June Lake. In contrast, this lake is crystal clear and full of fish. The sandy shores are dotted with granite boulders and pine trees. This summer day, we see children playing on the beach and boats idling about, fishing lines in. Nestled in this narrow valley, watched over by snowy peaks, June Lake, with its population of 600, has some of the atmosphere of a European mountain hamlet. We stop off at the local brewery in the village to round out our day with a cool pint. Then it was black, back to Mammoth to cook dinner. I think it's safe to say that we were all pleasantly exhausted by the end of the weekend and slept soundly the second night especially. We really did run about trying to fit in as much as possible. Mum and Sarah were such great travel companions, going along with everything, never hesitating to say yes to the next thing as I chauffeured them around. It was such a pleasure not only for me to show them my home mountains, but also to see their eyes light up at the vistas and curious landforms. The only problem is that it all went by too quickly, and the next thing I knew, they were back on the highway, heading home, and I was getting back to work. I truly love this part of the Sierra Nevada mountains, and plan on living here for at least another year. There are a million things to do, mountains to climb, lakes to swim in, valleys to explore, and wildlife to see. I want to do it all and capture the best of it in photo and video. To feel connected to the land, inspired by my surroundings and full of ideas and visions, it leaves me fulfilled and happy when I close my eyes at the end of each day. I go to bed tired and wake up hungry for more. I suppose I shall leave it at that for now, Grandma. I hope you enjoyed this little weekend recap as much as I've enjoyed making it for you. I, it really made me happy to hear how much you liked the Christmas video I made too. Thanks again for your kind birthday messages as well. 
I did have a nice day and I'm looking forward to see what my 30th year holds. I can hardly say life has been better than now. Take care, Grandma. I love you so much. I'll keep you close in my thoughts until I get to see you again. With love, from Joe. Bear. Holy shit. What?